I see it is you've got two choices. You can either keep pretending like nothing bad's ever gonna happen to you, and then when it does, you're saying, uh-oh, or you can get ahead of what's coming so that when it does, not if, you're ready for it, and you're sitting pretty, sipping on Mai Tais next to the pool, working on that Caribbean suntan, because you got it covered. So folks, it's time for you to learn the truth about money. It's time for you to take back control of your money so that you are ready for what's about to happen. By doing that, you're setting yourself up for absolute success. No matter what comes your way, you're ready for it. And that's what I want for you, and I wanna help you with that. So go to chrisnoggle.com and sign up for the Wealth Webinar. We do them every Wednesday at 1 p.m., and you need to be there because it's time. For over 90 years, we've been crash testing our cars in the tireless pursuit of automotive safety. At Volvo, safety's been first since 1927. We've saved millions of lives with the invention of the three-point seatbelt in 1959. At Volvo, we've made driving safer for you and them. Visit safety.finleyvolvo.com to learn more. So they say if you give a man a gun, he'll rob a bank. But if you give a man a bank, he'll rob everybody. The good news for you is Private Money Club runs solely on peer-to-peer -peer relationships, which means no banks allowed. So finally, there's a community for real estate entrepreneurs where it is truly a win-win solution. This community is a place where you can connect with other lenders and other borrowers, and the end results, massive growth for you. You get to build your real estate empire, and you get to do it solving other people's problems. So if that sounds like a place you want to be, well, then join us. Go to privatemoneyclub.com forward slash Kelly. And if you want 500 bucks off, just add the code Kelly500 and I'll knock 500 bucks off the premier membership. We'll see you on the inside. Welcome to the Kelly Cardenas podcast where attitude is everything. On today's show, we actually have a living, breathing Picasso. We have one of the greatest artists, honestly, of all time. Like when I came in contact with this man, it blew blew my mind what he was doing. I thought he was painting at first. Then I said, then I found out that it was wood that he was working with and I thought he was staining every piece and kind of painting the picture. No, it was each individual different type of wood that he inlaid and to be able to make some of the most amazing, iconic sneakerhead stuff. But the coolest thing is, is the reason why he did it. He had 25 years in marketing. And after that, when he was working in the creative side, he uh, started finding himself doing more and more on the managing people as opposed to working on his creative side. He started doing a little side hustle, started doing a little bit of woodworking, uh, kind of teaching himself, and uh, he needed to make a, a gift for his son, his son Stevie. And he made a, a gift for him. Uh, a couple of his friends uh, saw some of the work that he did. They said, man, that was, that's amazing. And uh, I'm going to yada yada it a little bit. Um, but then a, a guy whom some of you might know, a world champion named Pau Gasol got, uh, got wind of his art and uh, had reposted a picture, then DM'd him, and then ended up com uh, wanting the picture of Kobe that he was able to create. This threw him into the stratosphere. Now he's working all over the world. This guy is unbelievable, probably one of the coolest cats. I reached out, I've been reaching out to him. I think it's been for about four or five months, but here's how I got him. Because my son is that cool. We sat on the couch the other night and Maddox and myself, we sent him a video. We said, hey, Steve, we want you to know that I don't want my kids to worship idols. I want them to be inspired by icons like you. Maddox, tell them we need them on the show. And Maddox told him, and guess what? He hit me right away. And he is here with us today. I believe one of the greatest artists of our time, Mr. Steve Thompson. Welcome to the show, my man. What's good? What's good? Thank you so much, man. I appreciate all the kind words. It's, uh, you know, uh, you know, kids will always pull at my heartstrings, man. So it's uh, when I when I saw that video from your son, it was a no brainer. Well, it was it was incredible, man. I want to show some people. I you can get, we could see your work, right? If you're watching on YouTube, which all of you should be, um, and you should be subscribing because my son will think I'm cool. Um, and you need to check out Steve Happy Wood Life on Instagram. Is that uh, on uh, TikTok also? Actually, actually, I'll, uh, I'll I'll correct you on that. It's Happy Life Wood. Happy, Happy Life, Life Wood. Life I'm sorry. Yeah. Happy it, Life it Wood. It happens all the time. So this. It happens all the time. 
This is, it's, it's unbelievable to be able to see it. You have to see it. I'm going to, I'm going to bring up a couple of pictures. He's got some originals right behind him. If you're watching, I'm going to bring up a couple, uh, that, that you see kind of take us through this journey. I just popped up the pictures, uh, because I didn't want him to go over the top of you cause you have the real stuff. I just have the, I have the lithographs of, of the, the, <laughs> the cool work. Take us through this because I have a picture right now. For those of you listening, I have a picture of Nipsey Hussle, Kobe Bryant, Julius Randall's Jersey, and then Steve and Julius Randall uh, when he presented the jersey to him. Take us through these. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's been a wild ride. Uh, it's been, I think, two two and a half years. Uh, and like you said, um, you know, I was working in the the corporate world, nine to five marketing, uh, not really, you know, getting the creative uh, uh, aspect that I needed, and um, just uh, was looking for something to to just take my mind away from all the, the corporate bullshit. And uh, it took me to woodworking. I don't know why, because I never even used any tools or picked up a tool in my life. But it's like, I thought, hey, I'll give it a try, do like a simple project. And, you know, I built some shelves or something. And, it, and it, from there, I just, I fell in love with the process of, you know, working with my hands and getting lost in something um, positive that, you know, just, got me through those, you know, those times when I was just so stressed out from work. Um, and, uh, you know, it, from there, um, you know, I was doing kind of like traditional woodworking. I kind of taught myself, um, you know, I was making tables and more traditional stuff. Again, you know, uh, looking for something a little bit more creative. And my son's a big sneaker head. And uh, so am I. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of, I think, creating another one. Um, but uh, I, I thought, you know, I want to, I want to build something out of wood for him, but I don't, he lived in on the other side of the country in Denver. I couldn't ship, you know, a table or anything like that. So I thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to create a, a, a picture out of wood. And the one thing in my mind, I don't know why, but I, I just wanted to use the scraps I had laying around and I didn't want to use any paints or stains. I just wanted to put it together and um, let the natural colors and the grain and the wood, you know, reference the colors in the actual sneaker. Um, so, you know, I, I started out where basically my, my initial intention was to put it together like a puzzle and just kind of have a flat image, you know. And um, I, I got it all together and I started standing it, you know, on the corners and doing some different things. And I, I'll never forget it. I, I I had it sitting up on the wall in my shop, and I, at one point looked up at I looked up at it, and I'm like, wow, it's really starting to take on some realness. You know, I think I can t take this further and actually, you know, create something that that has some dimension and actually might look somewhat real. So, um, you know, finished it up. I was pretty pretty happy with it. It's actually it's the piece that's behind me. Um, it's the, uh, the black cement threes, which is the sneaker that he and I waited in line for back in, I can't remember what year it was, uh, 12, maybe 11, 12, 2011 or 2012. And, um, you know, I used to do that with him cause that's when, you know, that's what the sneaker game was where you, you'd have to get in line at, you know at the crack and crack of dawn. And, um, you know, that was a, a real special experience for us, you know, as father and son. And we, we bonded over it as, as we did over a lot of different things, sports, art, fashion, everything. So, um, so this, when I gave it to him really, I think struck a chord and, and he was extremely, um, extremely happy with it. Uh, and said to me, Dad, you got something special. This is different. You you got to take this further down the path. So um, once once he said that to me, it just kind of lit a fire in me. And I said, you know, I think that um, I want to really challenge myself and I want to do, do a portrait. And at the time, it was shortly after um, Kobe's passing. And I said, well, I, you know, I'm going to do something to, to pay tribute to Kobe. So I, I, I did that Kobe piece. It took me 
probably six months and it was during COVID. I was still working my job, but it, it, it was the, the period in time where I basically developed my process in this technique. And, you know, I took my, I really took my time. I tried different things. Um, and then um, once I was done with it, uh, again, I, I got a really good reaction from him um, and, and other, others as well. But a, a, a guy at work said to me, he goes, do you mind if I post this on Instagram? And I said, no, not at all. And at the time, I really didn't have a, a presence on social. And um, he posts it, and probably not 20 minutes later, he texts me and he goes, you're not going to believe this, but Pau Gasol shared it. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's, that's really cool, you know? About another 20 minutes later, he texts me back again and he says, you're really not going to believe this, but he just DM'd me and wants to know how he can purchase it. So next thing I know, I'm on a Zoom call with Pau Gasol and his business manager negotiating a price over this thing. It's my second piece I've ever done. You know, I had no idea in terms of, you know, pricing or costs or, you know, I mean, if I, if I really, you know, looked at the hours I had into it, you know, it, it would be, you know, astronomical, but, you know, I came up with a, what I thought was a fair price and uh, we worked out a deal. And in that deal, you know, he, he said that he would, you know, post it on his, his social. He did a picture of him with the piece and, um, it, it just, you know, it, it caught some virality and it's just crazy. I haven't, I haven't looked back since it's been, it's been crazy. I, I, I really feel so grateful, not only, f you know, for Powell, but my son, my friend, uh, you know, all these different people that basically set this up for me to basically live, live out my dream. And, uh, it's, it's crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm so blessed. Well, Steve, you are living out that dream where, you know, we hear it all the time, person working and they're just, they're working, right? And then they find a passion and they're able to move towards that. You actually did something that I thought was amazing is you started doing the work after the nine to five. So you started putting in more work as you were working your craft. You didn't just go headlong into it right away. How long after that Pau Gasol scenario did you say hey this is what i'm going to do and this is all i'm going to do and, and i'm going headlong into it well it's interesting because you know I, I never jumped into it like that i basically i was you know it was an opportunity that that you know came about that i didn't have any control over right right after covid had started i got laid off due to covid and um again my son said to me dad you're going to do this full time. Don't worry about it. I'm going to help you. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to help you with all your social. He, he was working in the uh, influencer marketing space at the time. And, um, you know, it's pretty, pretty knowledgeable on, on all of that. And, uh, you know, I, I was to a certain degree too, because I was in marketing, but the combination of both him and I, um, you know, was just, was just really, uh, it was really great. And so, you know, it, it kind of like was that, you know, a lot of people struggled to say, okay, when am I going to make that jump from, you know, my job to this, this big, you know, um, uh, risk of having to support myself doing, you know, what I do without anything else. And, uh, I did it and um, it, it was actually the perfect timing because COVID, um, you know, it, it gave me a lot of opportunities, uh, whereas I, I wouldn't have had that um, prior to that. So um, I kind of looked at it, you know, look back at it as kind of like the perfect storm, got laid off, COVID kind of was pushed into this. Um, you know, I was right at the height of, you know, really, you know, getting good at my craft and, you um, that's kind of how I really entered in, you know, kind of trial by, by fire. 
Take us to the Nice Kicks because this was the next stage, uh, the, the Nice Kicks kind of collaboration, and it uh, kind of went into doing some charity work too and have one of your pieces sell for over uh, for $25,000, um, which, is, which is amazing, which I'm sure by now the, the art is even more than, you know, that's, that's just dropping the bucket for you. But talk to us about that and how that Nice Kicks thing came about and, the, the, you know, the next processes. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's a, the situation was, um, you know, I think I had had my first video catch some virality on TikTok, I think. Um, and, um, you know, my son and I are, are always monitoring social, but, uh, he was actually here at the time and, uh, he comes running in and he goes, dad, you're not gonna believe this man, Matt Halfhill who's the founder of Nice Kicks and and my idol since I was in like seventh grade, I remember, you know, even emailing him in seventh grade, you know, um, but he, he actually commented on your work. And at the time, you know, our philosophy was, you know, let's let's reach out to anybody, you know, that, that could potentially help us in terms of gaining exposure and, you um, kind of learning uh, this whole social media world. And, you know, in the beginning, we would, we'd set up probably two to three calls a day with people um, just to, just to learn, you know, just to kind of get their viewpoints on, you know, what's working for them and, and, you know, what we can do to improve. um, Because it's, it's a, it's a new, you know, fairly new landscape. Um, so we wanted to just leverage as much as we could from from other people that were being successful. But anyways, we we actually asked Matt, um, you know, if he would be down to hop on a call because uh, I think he had actually expressed interest in possibly getting something done. So we hopped on a call with him. He was the greatest guy in the world. Um, we worked together on on that piece. Uh, I think it's you know it's got the um, I think six six p six iconic sneakers and you know that's something that we kind of came up with together uh and i said you know let's do let's do something um across the board maybe not just one sneaker but let's look at some of your favorite sneakers and sneakers that tell uh, you know stories for you and that that you know are iconic over the period of you know this whole sneaker run um and we we kind of put it together and uh, he, Matt was great. He actually wanted to purchase, and uh, you know, we actually traveled out to Austin at their headquarters and and hand delivered it and caught that all on on video. And and you, you can see the content on my page. But it was it was my first real um, moment where you know somebody you know really was absolutely ecstatic about you know, receiving the piece and, and the work. And it just, it's the greatest feeling in the world for me. It's my favorite part is, you know, being able to share my art with people that, you know, that really care about it. And uh, so, yeah, Matt, Matt is now a good friend. You know, it's one of the things we've, we've developed friendships and relationships with people that we've, we've, you know, come across in the industry. Um, and you know matt and just the whole sneaker community really has embraced myself and you know my art in a way that you know is is amazing um i can't say enough for the the whole sneaker community it's they've been awesome well take us through too because this this is nuts i mean the Julius Randall thing too, like when I saw those parts, I had seen that after I had seen the quality of your work. So I had seen, uh, you know, videos, I had seen those things and then here it is pop up and I see this Jersey and I'm like, Oh wow, maybe he's a New York Knicks fan and he's showing me an actual Jersey. And then (laughs) Steve, as I looked closer, I was like, Oh my goodness, that is not a Jersey. That's a like that's a piece of art that Steve has been able to do. Take us through that part because this is, I mean, that if you haven't seen that, I'm gonna pop it up again. It's it's uh, a down in my uh, my left uh, side. If you're on YouTube, you can see this. If you're on Spotify, you can watch it there. I'm gonna I'm gonna enhance this a little bit because I want people to be able to see it. This is unbelievable. 
the way that you put the creases in the whole nine, how did this connection point come along and, and what was the inspiration with this? So uh, Julius and um, his manager reached out about a year ago and, um, you know, just they had seen me on, on social media and um, said that Julius has been looking for some artwork and, you know, has really was looking for something different. And uh, they've been looking and they saw my stuff and and they were, you know, they were set right there that they knew that they wanted to do something with me. So I was, you know, of course, excited. Uh, Julius is a, a phenomenal player, phenomenal guy. Um, and um, so at first he came to me and he said, I want to do two portraits. I want to do a Nipsey, uh, Nipsey piece and I want to do a Tupac piece. And I was like, oh man, that, those are going to be so fire to do. Um, and so as we got going, um, I had been, I've, I've had this idea in my head that I wanted to do a Jersey, um, for a long time. And if you, if you've seen my work, most of it is two dimensional. It's, you know, it's got a, a kind of a 3d perspective, but it's actually, you know, flat on, on the back. It's just, you know, it's, it's carved and reliefed, you know, on the one side. So it gives the illusion of 3d. Um, but I wanted to do something that was full three dimensional, you know, using, you know, multiple colors and, and, um, all the natural colors in the wood. And so at, at some point, I think, I don't know, I was just kind of joking around with his manager and I said, you know, let's do his Jersey. And he was like, you know, that, that would be really, really cool. So, um, got the green light and, uh, you know, it's something that, uh, kind of came at the right time for me in terms of I, I always try to evolve at each each piece I want to be better than the last it's 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 a real goal of mine for every piece um and you know I'm working on something now that you know it, I think is is another evolution in you know what I'm doing and I've got some other things you know kind of uh down the road that I think so yeah, I'm 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 constantly looking at evolving and getting better at what I do. That's that's what I'm passionate about and that's what kind of keeps me going. I love what I do. I love every single aspect. Um, you know, it's not work to me, it's it's just absolute pleasure. I mean, I, I work, you know, sometimes sixteen, seventeen hours a day and it it, it it doesn't bother me one bit. Like it's just it's crazy. Um so that's kind of how that came about. And, uh, you know, it was really uh, special that we were able to do a pop-up in New York City. Uh, we we uh, had the opportunity to partner with um, ball players in 1.37 p.m. Uh, and uh, put together kind of last minute because Julius was going to be in New York City, this unveiling. Uh, and then we were also talking to... Um, uh, a, a gallery in New York City. Uh, it's called Lux. It's in the the uh, Rolls Royce dealership in New York City, and um, we were kind of talking to him about possibly down the road doing an exhibition there. And um, you know, we said, "Hey, you know, would you would you be open to hosting this this pop up this unveiling?" He's like, "Absolutely, let's do it." This was a week prior to when it happened. And uh, we ended up throwing everything together, went down to New York City, and um, it was it was awesome. I mean, Julius is just I mean, obviously, he's, you know, he's beloved in, in New York City and he, he's he's an amazing guy and uh, amazing player. Um, but it, it was just um, it was real, real special to me because it was really the first time that my work has ever been seen live. Um, other than, um, we, I did show some stuff at complex con last year. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it, the whole thing was, was, was awesome. We, talk about complex con too, because you had, to, you actually set up a whole workshop while you were there, which was a, a pretty strong thing to be able to do. And, and that's a feat in itself. Um, how do you, number one, uh, talk about that, but also to, Steve, how do you deal with the type of demand that comes? Because everyone out there, when I say the American dream, right? So the American dream when I was growing up was 
two, two and a half kids, white picket fence, whatever it was. A lot of the, the American dream today is do what I'm passionate about, have someone recognize it. And then as the kids would say, my son would say, dad, that blew up. But it wasn't an overnight success, as we know. But how do you prepare yourself, and how have you been able to deal with that? Because when Julius or Powell says, hey, this guy is the, the man, you must have people flooding in saying, I, I want this, I want that, I want this. How do you manage that? Uh, it's, you know, it's just the two of us. It's my son and myself. And, um, you know, we and we we monitor everything closely and we try to be as responsive, responsive as we can. I know I didn't get back to you for for, for quite a while, but um, we really we really do try to, you know, answer questions and um, uh, just try and do as much as we possibly can, because, you know, without without the support of, you know, the the followers and and the people that have been so gracious with, you know, words on my work, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing right now. You know, go back, you know, 20 years ago, you know, where there wasn't this power of social media to kind of give, you know, exposure to, to an artist. Um, I would have never been able to do it. So we really try to be respectful to you know uh, the people that are supporting me and and um you know uh paying attention i guess to my work um but it's it's difficult it, it really is i mean it's just a lot of time spent on social media which you know sometimes we kind of have to um you know uh, kind of rein it in because i mean we can be on there you know 24 7 and that's not healthy either so um you know, it's it's just trying to be mindful and, um, you know, kind of uh, just, you know, paying attention and, and you know, getting back to people. And um, I think we're, we've done a pretty good job at it. You guys have done amazing. So I, I want to talk about the technical part of this, because even looking like if you're again, if you're watching on YouTube right now, you can see it in the back. You see the cement threes and then. One of my favorites, which I believe is the most slept on shoe in the, on the planet, is the Jordan 2. It's the first Jordans I ever had. My Aunt Pam told me and my brother, hey, you could choose any shoe you want. I chose Jordans. He, sh he chose some aerobic Reeboks. Rob, you're, if you're listening, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Looking like Boy George. Um, but uh, talk to us about this because I really thought it was you painting this thing. How are you able to find the colors of wood? And then are you putting it together like a piece of a puzzle or how, how does this whole process happen? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. And, you know, uh, we've worked really hard at educating people because it's, you know, you know, the majority of people were, were in your camp that, you know, didn't really understand it. I, I would get over and over again, you know, is it painted? Um, and so one of the things that we, you know, early on that we did, and that's when we really started seeing some, you know, some, some real engagement was basically me coming on screen and just explaining exactly what it is in, in, in its most simple form. Um, and, um, you know, basically the fact that it's, you know, they're all individually cut, um, then I, you know, put them together like a puzzle. I carve and sand and that there's no paints or stains. Um, and, you know, at the end, I, I apply a wax oil, a clear wax oil to protect the wood. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it. It's, um, <clears throat> you know, it's just a matter of sourcing different woods. That, I mean, there's so there's such a variety of, uh, of species of wood um, in the world. And, you um, Believe it or not, they're not that hard to get. Um, I, I'm lucky enough to that I have a, a source right in, um, right near me here in Rochester that uh, carries a lot of exotic woods, and uh, so I get you know the majority there. But if I need you know really some some wild colors, I mean in, in the piece that I did for Nike, the the Dornbecker piece there for the charity, um, that was loaded with all these different crazy colors. So I needed pink, I needed red, yellow, purple, uh, you know, 
the majority I was able to get, you know, locally here, but I, you know, had to kind of do a little bit of research and scouring the internet to, to find some of those, some of those woods. But um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, um, to me, it's a simple process, but to others looking at it and seeing it, it's, it's, um, it, it, for some reason is confusing or they just don't understand it. Um, you know, it, I will say that when I first started doing this, I, you know, because I, I'd never seen anything like it. And, you know, of course I Googled, you know, wood art and just to see if there was anybody out there doing it. And I did, did happen to come across an art form that's, that's, you know, hundreds of years old, that's called intarsia. And if you look it up, it's, it's at its root form is what I do. It's basically utilizing different species of wood to, to form an image and not using any paint. So you're utilizing the color in the natural woods to, to create an image. It's, it's basically what I do. Um, but if you look at traditional intarsia artists and, and um, people that do intarsia, you'll see a, a little bit of a difference. You know, they will actually put the pieces together kind of like a puzzle, but they won't, they won't really build as much dimension into it and in in that continuous flow across all the different colors to kind of get that image to, to come to life. Whereas I put it all together and I, I use different thicknesses and, and just to get that dimension and then I carve and sand and so that it, I, I, my goal is to have it look as real as possible. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't think the, the traditional intarsia is, you know, that definition. Um, so yeah, and, and it's root, root form. And it's funny because when I did stumble across this, I'm like, wow, that's okay. That's pretty, you know, close to what I do. Um, so yeah. Well, you create, it's amazing because you almost created a whole different genre. You know, when you, when you said it, can you grab the threes in the, in the back edge? And this is yeah. going to, this is going to entice people to come onto our YouTube. If you're listening on Spotify or, or Apple, I love you. Make a review, share it. But I want to show you guys this from, from, I mean, if you hold on, I'm going to go to this here. So take us through the craftsmanship of this. Steve, because this is unbelievable. Right now, we're looking at a Jordan 2 low, off-white, and even the signature that's on the off-white 2s, he actually did in inlaid. Can you take us through the, the, the process of that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just like, you know, I approach all of my pieces where, you know, it's, um, uh, I, I basically build a template digitally i print it out on a uh you know on a computer and printer and um i just i just start cutting out the pieces and i put them together and i've you know i've kind of developed different techniques um to where i can you know get really detailed and um you know it all you know it all goes together and then basically when it goes together that's when you know the sculpting comes into play and it's um you know, that's really my favorite part is actually the carving and the sculpting. I say that I paint with wood, you know, and I think that's kind of true because a lot of times I'll start out with my template, but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll start, you know, kind of going off of that and just kind of, um, uh, kind of, you know, getting creative and, and kind of building it together as I go. So it's, it's almost like I'm, I'm painting with wood. So, Steve, when every, everyone that is out there that can see this, if you're on YouTube or if you're on Spotify, go to the video part because you have to see this and you have to see the work. If not, go to Happy Life Wood on Instagram or you can hit them on TikTok also. But this is, it's mind-blowing. Like, to be able to have, okay, what does a piece like this cost now? Like, a per, because there's going to be so many people that, that want it, not everyone in the world can have that. But what does an yeah. original Steve go for now? To give us a well, uh, it's it's one of the things that um, you know that has been the most difficult for us and for me really is you know I've got I've had you know so many awesome people reach out and say you know 
um, I'm interested. Can I get a quote? And I think a lot of times they go into it and they don't really understand that these things take me, you know, hundreds of hours, like a, you know, a portrait will take me, you know, a month, you know, to a month and a half. And it's just, it's very tedious. Um, as you could see from that piece alone, I mean, um, my pieces, you know, can range anywhere from, you know, 250 total pieces to, you know, five to 600 total pieces with, you know, 15 to 20, maybe even some, sometimes 25 different species of wood in there. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it, it, you know, it's hard because, it, you know, I put my blood, sweat and tears in and, and it, you know, it takes a lot of time. It's tedious. So obviously, you know, it's going to cost, you know, a fair amount of money, but some people don't understand that. And, um, but I like to, you know, I like to address each person that's, that's reaching out and wants to, you know, know, um, it's tough. I, I don't normally talk about pricing cause it's yeah. just, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me, but, um, you know, when I started out the first year I did, most of my work was basically done for free um, just because I needed to, I needed, I mean, I had the Kobe piece and I had the, the cement threes and, and people were like hitting me up and it's like, you know, I don't have any type of portfolio to show them or like a body of work. So I needed to basically kind of like, uh, you know, just go out there and find, you know, people that were willing to, to buy my art at a, at a reasonable cost, but it's still not covering the labor that I'm putting into it. Just, mm -hmm. but it, but it's what, it's the investment that I needed to make in order to continue doing what I'm doing. So, make it make sense. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, and it, I understand, Steve, I understand when, yeah, when, you were, yeah. when you're talking about it. But the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because there's a lot of times where people will see art and, and they don't know how to support the artist. Like how can, and even uh, I, I showed you my shirt today and it just made me laugh. Yeah. And it, if, for those of you not watching, it says buy art, it. buy art, not crack. And I got to use it as a metaphor today, Steve, because... I was talking to a real estate uh, convention that I was, uh, uh, I emceed and then I, I spoke at. And what I told them, and I showed them, and they all laughed. And they're all, you know, real estate guys. And I said, but this is the lesson today. By art, it appreciates in value, not crack that will give you an instant fix and then you're going to lose your teeth later on. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So how can people that are out there, because literally every single person that sees your art, like, and I can tell you this. My wife and I don't have the same social media. I mentioned your name. My wife was like, last night, she was like, oh yeah, he is the best. And I was like, wait a second, you spend a time with another man? Like, that's how I was, you know. <laughs> but everyone who comes in contact with your stuff is enamored. How can we support an artist like you? Yeah, you know, we've, we've um, asked that question to ourselves for, you know, since we started and, you know, the first thing that we did was, you know, try to figure out a way to, you know, put something out there that people could purchase at a, you know, at a reasonable cost. Um, if, if they really liked my work and, and they did want to support. So we did prints. Um, and I think we just sold out of the last one, but, um, we do do prints when I put different pieces out, um, but, you know, we've had some merch, uh, you know, we did some hoodies and hats and, and things like that. But we're, we're um, right now, we're really looking into developing something that, you know, that is representative of my art, but not, you know, um, doesn't cost a, a ton of money. Um, something that's, you know, uh, similar to like a replica but it's i mean i would love to do you know replicas but it's like you know it's it's almost impossible um but we're looking into doing something something cool that that people can buy and um if if they do want to support which is you know uh which is great i appreciate every single person that supports me um the, you know, I just, I, you know, it, money's not the, the thing for me in terms of my art. It's, um, it, it's really just the, 
you know, the happiness that I hope that it brings to people and, um, and just, you know, having my work be appreciated is, is really what means the most to me. Well, we, I mean, honestly, like seeing it from the outside, like I've got a, a, a Jordan four in the back of me, but that's the actual shoe. And I'm looking behind you at those cement threes. And I'm like, I don't understand. Like, how are you able to gain that perspective? I mean, did you, did you, were you an artist growing up? Did you draw growing up? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I draw, um, I've drawn since I was, you know, since I can remember, um, you know, I played a lot of sports. I played three sports in school and that was really, I was brought up in a kind of a, uh, uh, sports household. My dad was an athlete and, um, my brother and I are about a year apart and, uh, you know, sports was everything growing up. You know, we played uh, basketball, soccer, baseball, and, um, you know, it, it, but, but when we, we were doing that most of the time, probably 98% of the time, but when I wasn't doing that, you know, I really enjoyed drawing and, um, I'm a, I'm a doodler. Like I, I can't like even right now, like normally when I'm on calls and stuff, my son will get mad at me because, you know, I'll, I'll, he's like, dad, you're, you got to look up. You're like, you're not, you're not engaging. I am, I'm hearing everything that, but I, I have to be like, like doing something. And, um, so I, I really enjoy drawing, um, a couple things. I, I actually have a couple things I can share, um, yeah. that I just did actually, this is, um, This is something that might possibly be in in the the works. It's, so this uh, is an exclusive, fairly, Steve, right here. So oh, this is like, oh, oh, a left. Uh, yep, there we go. Yeah. So, so oh that's you know God. that's obviously I I I really enjoy drawing, um, and it's really I think what um, you know it's the root of where all this comes from. It's just having that vision. Um, and, and being able to see, you know, something and kind of bring it to life. It's, you know, I, I feel blessed that I have that ability and it's given me the, the opportunity to do this. And, you know, it's, um, and it's, and it's crazy because, you know, obviously I love, I've loved to draw my whole life, but being able to learn another art form, you know, later in life and, um, be and and especially to be able to do it for a living is is um it just blows my mind every day i have to pinch myself every morning when i get up and and i i just come out into my shop or you know i go to dunkin donuts in the morning and get coffee it's um i i just i still feel like i'm i'm in a dream it's it's crazy so steve uh there's a book uh, by larry kasanoff uh, called a touch of madness um, I would suggest it for you because it's it's one of those things as far as like one of the things that he talks about is asking, um, like not being afraid to ask. It's incredible because yours, yours on the other side of it where you did your art, you locked into what you knew was the greatest and then the people found you, you know, which I think is amazing. Um, what type of project, like is there a person out there um, that – you would like to, yeah, I mean, obviously Julius found you, Pal found you. Um, who would Steve like to find? Oh man. Um, it's funny that you say this because we, my son just put up on, uh, I think somebody asked us, we did some questions on, uh, on Instagram and, um, somebody asked, you know, one of my dream projects and or people that you'd want to work with. And there was, you know, there was a, a short list there. I've always wanted to do something for um, and with uh, Tinker Hatfield, who is the designer that did originally designed those cement threes that you see back there, and is a, an absolute legend in the the sneaker world. Um, and I was I was actually able to to meet him and actually have a, a Zoom call with him, which you know I. I still can't believe actually happened um with the connections that i made at nike and um you know when i did the the dornbecker charity thing uh i was you know lucky enough to be able to um link up with him and uh 
you know, hopefully at some point we're going to maybe do something together. Obviously, you know, Michael Jordan, um, who's, you know, another idol of mine, um, is, you know, somebody else that I would love to, to do work, you know, do a project for. And, uh, um, and that's, you know, um, it's, it's crazy, you know, um, it's, we've been hit with so many different, um, opportunities and each one I, you know, I'm just so grateful for because it's, it's not only is it, you know, uh, really special people that I'm able to create my art for, but it's, it's also, you know, people that are in, you know, the world of the things that I'm passionate about and I love, whether it's sneakers or, you know, fashion, um, sports, uh, and it, and it's really, it's all the things that my son and I, you know, were passionate about, you know, when he was growing up and, and even now, and it's given us the opportunity to, to do some things in the last two years that, I don't think we ever thought we would ever do. And um, I'm just so, so grateful to have those opportunities and, you know, do those things with him. Um, that's, you know, the greatest thing that's come out of this whole thing for me is, you know, being able to work with my son closely. And, um, you know, for a while he lived in Denver. So it was, it was, a, you know, we we're obviously on the phone, you know, all the time discussing the, the business and, uh, but it was just something that, um, you know, even created a closer bond between us than we already had. And we had, we had a really close bond. Um, and now, now he's actually moved to the, to the East coast and is living in New York city. So, so that's cool. Um, and, and I like to, I'll have fun going to visit him there, but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's hard. There's, there's, um, you know, uh, athletes i always you know um looked up to um and um you know there's certain designers out there that i have always thought really highly of that um that i'd like to work with but you know i just i just feel grateful for any any opportunity that comes comes my way even if it's not a celebrity even if it's you know somebody that you know, that's going to appreciate, like I said, it's going to appreciate my art. I mean, you know, like I was telling you in that first year, I did some projects for some people that, you know, weren't high profile, but they were the, the, the best people. I mean, I built friendships and relationships with these people. They were, you know, they were passionate about, you know, getting the pieces done. Um, you know, I had, I had done a, I did a, uh, portrait of a little girl that this woman had lost. She reached out to me like a week after she lost her. She was three years old and, and, um, she reached out to me and I said, I have to do this piece. Um, and I ended up doing it. She lived in California, traveled here to, to the East coast to, to pick the piece up. And, um, I was able to share that moment with her and her husband was on FaceTime and that right there, is as special to me as it would be if I was doing a piece and handing it to Michael Jordan. I mean, it's just it, the amount of um, joy that I, that I get out of that is, is immense. And I just love, you know, I did a piece uh, my, of my father and to this day, it's still my fa favorite piece. Um, and, you know, he got emotional when I gave it to him. And uh, uh, again, that, you know, that feeling of doing something special that, you know, is, that means so much to somebody is really um, what I do it for. Steve, it's, it's incredible because you bring it back uh, right back around when, when I did the introduction or talked about you in the beginning, the whole thing started from doing a, um, a birthday present for Stevie, for your, for your son. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just I want to compliment you, man, because there's not a lot of people like you in the world and we need more of them that it's like you focus in on the right things for the right reasons and the right things keep happening. And thank you. And I, appreciate I, that and I just so I, I want to I want to speak life to that 
Um, because again, you don't get to, you, number one, you don't get to see it that much. Number two, you don't get to experience it. Um, let alone get to experience a master at their, at their craft. Um, but it's, it's so refreshing to be able to, you know, and I guess the question that I have for you is most people are struggling for opportunity, right? They're like, oh man, if I just got the opportunity, you're on the flip side of that. You have to filter the opportunities that you get. Mm -hmm. What if you were talking to a kid that was, you know, hey, Steve, I'm striving, I'm trying to get these opportunities. What how, what would you say to that kid? I mean, I just I think that you have to be, you know, um, driven and passionate about what you're doing. And, you know, don't be afraid to reach out and, and try and gain knowledge and experience from others that are doing it successfully. I mean, like I said, we, we would reach out to people, you know, in the beginning and um, thinking that we wouldn't get, you know, meetings or a DM back. And most people, believe it or not, are, are you know, willing to take a few minutes and, and sit down with you and, uh, um, you know, really just kind of pass on that knowledge and, and share you know, some of the things that's made that have made them successful. And, and that's really don't, you know, don't, don't stay in your, your own little world, you know, really try and, um, uh, you know, get, get interaction with different people that are in that space and, um, and just soak up as, as much as you can. Um, I think it's all about just, um, you know, educating yourself, whether it be, you know, in the craft that you're wanting to go into, or, um, you know, the space that 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 you're wanting to get into, um, just research and, and teach yourself as much as you possibly can soak it all in. Um, it, it, you really need to be a steward of what you're doing. Um, and uh, be able to talk the talk and walk the walk, man. It's, it's, it's only going to make you better at what you do. And, and, um, at the end of the day, um, you know, you don't want anything, you know, that's, that's going to hold you back in terms of knowledge, um, to, to further what you're doing. I, you know, um, I, I hate if I don't, you know, know something, you know, that, that I could have known, um, that's going to make things, you know, me able to be more effective in what I do. You know, I'm constantly researching different techniques and, and trying to develop different techniques. Somebody asked me a question the other day, which I thought was great. Um, they said, you know, we know that you use a lot of woodworking tools to, to carve and sand and, and do all this stuff, but have you ever had to actually develop or, or make your own tool? And, um, you know, that's the creative part that I love is, you know, figuring, trying to figure out ways to do things more effectively and efficiently. And if that means me having to kind of like tinker and make, you know, my own tool, then I'll do it. And, and, um, it's something that, that I've done several times, uh, to, you know, kind of solve a problem or that, where that's just not addressed in the, you know, in the space in terms of tools that are developed. But um, yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's all about, you know, passion um, and, and being driven. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little crazy when it when it comes to that. And it, it, you'll see most entrepreneurs, they're, you know, they're incredibly driven and incredibly, you know, passionate and almost, you know, workaholics. Um, and you do have to find that, that balance, but, you know, I get asked all the time, you know, don't you wish you would have found this earlier in life? And while, while I would say, yeah, I would, you know, it would have been cool. I, I don't think that I could have done this, you know, when my kids were young, you know, I was so, you know, heavily involved with them. I coached other sports and I, you know, was very involved dad. And um, I wouldn't have been able to, to dedicate the time that, that I do to this now. And uh, 
and and I wouldn't have wanted to, you know. So it's 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 almost like it's come at the right time in my life, which is which is crazy. It's um, you know, I always tell people that I feel like I'm retired and I just I'm doing what I love, and uh, it's it's given me you know such great opportunities. Now, my wife will sometimes you know tell you that she doesn't want me working out here as much, but. Uh, it's it's she's great about it and you know i have to to thank her for all the support that she's given me and um because she knows i'm doing what i love and and that's important to her too so what do you yeah. want what's the message that you want stevie to get out of all of this not just out of like one project or whatever it is but this whole journey that his his pop is going through like what message do you want to send to him Yes, it's crazy, man. I sometimes I don't even have to send him messages because he sends me messages. I mean, sometimes I feel like we're, you know, reverse. Sometimes he, he's the responsible dad, and I'm the the one that's just kind of making my way. But you know, it, it's it's I think leading by example in terms of you know working hard and um, you know I, I had a a, a great unbelievable father and, and mother and um you know i just basically i do everything you know that's that's kind of patterned after what i learned from them and hopefully you know it's just you know leading by example and and you know he can see you know the hard work and the, the everything that goes into it and, but but again he's he's you know um he's just as is responsible and and driven as i am for this whole thing he's really probably the catalyst to all of this in terms of you know being my my biggest cheerleader and somebody that um has kept me going um uh to to just do you know the best i can well steve we're all huge fans man i mean not only for me not only the art form part of it, but also being able to spend this time with you and to be able to see your heart. Um, it, it's, it's unbelievable, um, to be able to experience that. So, you know, I started the podcast. I told you on the video when I sent it over to you, I started it because my, my son Maddox, who's 12, who you saw and my daughter McKenna, who's 14. And I didn't want them to worship idols. I didn't want any time that they'd have a pop star that, uh, that they really liked then I would want to figure out how they, they could meet them so they could see that they were just people. Yeah. And uh, because I was just wanted to be inspired by icons like yourself. So what advice would you have for Maddox and McKenna? And if you could use both their names, it would be awesome, Steve. <laughs> well, Maddox and McKenna, I would, um, I would just say, like I've always told my kids, uh, you know, I have a, a son and a daughter as well. Um, and, uh, you know, just be yourself. And, um, you know, if there's something that you want to do, just chase it. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I didn't, you know, realize what I really wanted to do in the beginning. Um, and, and, you know, I, I realized that early on that I wanted, I knew I wanted to have a family. And like you said, in the beginning, the, you know, the American dream was, you know, the kids and the family and the, the house and all that. And that, that was really my dream in the beginning. Um, so I was passionate about that. You know, it's like, I wanted to, to be a dad. I want to, you know, be the best father and husband I could be. And, and, um, but at the, at the end of the day, it's just being true to yourself and, and, and being, you know, um, loving what you do and, and just following your heart and being determined and, and, not to, you know, if you're interest, interested in something, you know, just know that you, it, it's possible and that you can do it. It's, you know, it's just going to be hard work. It, you know, everything is, is hard work if you, if you really want to be, you know, the best you can be at it. And, you know, just, I guess my biggest uh, uh, advice to um, Maddox and, and, um, now I forgot your daughter's McKenna. name, but uh, McKenna. McKenna, just, um, you know, if, if you want to do something and I'm sure your dad is, is giving you all this advice. Cause he's a, he's a great guy. And I'm sure, you know, is a, is a fantastic father. 
Um, but just, um, you know, go after it. There's, there's nothing stopping you. And, you know, these people that you look at as, you know, idols or, or whatever, like your dad said, are just people too. And, and, um, you know, they've been, they were kids just like you, you are. And, uh, you know, they, they've just, you know, worked hard to get where they're at. Well, Steve, it is, it has been an absolute pleasure. I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to a guy named Gino who listens to the podcast. He's one of the, one of the, one of our top and Gino you have to see Steve's work. You have to see. And I'm not just talking to, well, I'm just talking to Gino right now. Gino, you need to go on Happy Life Wood on Instagram. It will blow your mind. I mean, this, and this is for me, um, because of my roots, because I fell in love with sneakers, because I was a Jordan fan growing up, because of all those things. And if you saw the entire office, I'm going to switch to it, so you could see the entire stuff back behind it's exactly in lines. So when I saw, when I saw Steve's work, I mean, unbelievable, man. And, and what I want us to understand and and anyone out there listening or watching is most of the time we don't appreciate a true artist until they're gone. And I saw this, you see this happen with with Kobe, you see this happen with, you know, uh, with a bunch of different artists in their crafts. We don't appreciate them enough. Like Michael Jordan, if we would have known what Michael Jordan is to us now, everyone would have been glued to the set every single game, never missed a game. But most of the time, it, we have to wait. Please don't wait. Understand that we have a genius. We have a master in our midst with, with Steve Thompson. And he's a super humble guy. And he's going to be like, no, deflect it and all the things. But I tell you, his work, your work is, it It made me speechless. Like, I've been, I've been on high all this morning because I get a chance to be able to spend time with you. So I appreciate that so much, man. I, it, uh, yeah, your kind words are... Um, are so appreciated. Well, Steve, it's, it's unbelievable. You're, you're better than advertised, man. Um, the, the website, uh, give us the website. We're going to have it in the link in the bio too. Every one of you needs to go to happy life wood on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and anywhere else. And we need to support this man as much as possible. Now, some pe- some of you out there are going to be lucky enough to have an original, maybe, maybe, but <laughs> I tell you, Steve. Like honestly, you are you are an absolute absolute genius, man. And and I'm I'm better for knowing Thank you and you. for Thank spending you so a little bit of time with you. Um, Appreciate so, that. Oh, so. uh, website, website. Well, how can we get how can we get in touch? Uh, happylifewood.com. Makes it simple, man. Everything happy life wood, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. It's even, it's even on his knuckles. I love that. Man. <laughs> it, it, I, I want to tell you just again, how much I appreciate you. Every one of you guys out there listening, watching, sharing um, the podcast. I want to thank you for helping us get in the top 1% globally. And it's not because we set out to do that. It's because we continue to have people like Steve who are the real superheroes, who are the people who need to be celebrated at the highest level. And we keep bringing them to you. If uh, I have so many people out there too, Steve, that have asked me like, could I sit in the studio and and listen and meet Steve? Well, now you have the opportunity to do this. Hopefully we'll get Steve at some point, but we now have the Vibe Room. And the Vibe Room is on October 5th. It's in Salt Lake City. It's a live version of the podcast in a 60s speakeasy jazz club. We've got wow. Larry, Larry Namer, the... Uh, the um, founder of the E Entertainment Network. We got Thurl Bailey, NBA legend, and we got Damian Horn that's going to be an award-winning singer-songwriter. And someday we're going to have Steve Thompson in that room, <laughs> sitting down, having a chat, and you'll be able to meet him, which would be amazing. Uh, that, that, that event on October 5th is actually sold out, so you're not allowed. To, you can't go to that one, but stay in touch with us uh, for the future. But every one of you right now, please, please, please stop what you're doing and go to happylifewood.com and Happy Life Wood everything and support as much as you possibly can because, honestly, we have a master in our midst. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, and congratulations to you, man, on, uh, on all your success with this podcast. Um, it's, you know, I've done a, a fair amount of podcasts, and uh, this has by far been my favorite, so 
Thank, Thank you, you so much. I appreciate you, man. And uh, like I said, if you're if you're watching, if you're uh, uh, if you're listening, share it, subscribe, send us a review, subscribe on YouTube because my son will think I'm cooler. Steve, you have been absolutely phenomenal, and I'm going to force you to be my friend for the rest of your life, so you can't get rid of me. And you are officially off the hot seat.